Welcome to the NXT Podcast, your home for weekly NXT reviews and insight. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. Find all of your NXT news, recaps, and analysis right here. So with that being said, we only have one question for you. Are you ready? We thought so. Let's get the show started right now. All right. This is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor on 528. We're going to do a little... NXT Battleground review here, and uh, you know this uh, WWE's had some good pay per views the last couple of days. You know Saturday in Saudi Arabia was pretty good, uh, and uh, with Night of Champions, and then uh, the Triple Threat match that starts out Battleground uh, with Wesley, Tyler Bate, and Joe Gacy of a schism, and. <laughs> And he's with Ava, of course. And uh, this is a pretty good match. Wesley comes out, uh, you know, all fired up. You got Taylor Bate, the big strong boy. Uh, he comes out already starting or kind of planting seeds from the start. Uh, he suggests to Wes that they both take out uh, Gacy, and then he doesn't help. <laughs> and then Gacy is trying to, uh, you know, get them to, Wes and Tyler, to go at it. So, uh you know, kind of a bit of an old school there from Gacy. Of course, they all turn on him, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's pretty good. And you got Wesley and Tyler Bate really kind of going at it, move for move. Uh, really good, really good. I mean, I cannot say uh, anything bad about this match. Good match. They uh, that uh, cardiac uh, kick that Wesley does is prominent. I mean, uh, but there was some good m- moments in here that I kind of like to watch. There was a uh, one point in time, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Wes that got a uh, sleeper on uh, Joe Gacy. Excuse him. And, uh, and it's the way the meltdown that the guy that is receiving the sleeper, I like to watch. Does he sell that move? Uh, you know, and, and Gacy does. He does really good. And then he kind of melts down a little bit. Of course, there's some other big moves. Uh I mean, just a good match. And to start off the show, I mean, pretty strong. Uh, Wesley is going to end up winning this with a, a, a with a uh, his cardiac kick. But he does a double one earlier in the match, too. Uh, really good. So, uh, yeah, a big kick to Gacy. Uh, and, and, and Wesley is going to win this thing. And it's the uh, most title defenses for this belt i believe i heard him say so uh hey i i, I enjoyed this match i uh you know I, I expected very little and got quite a bit so um you know i recommend the match uh and today or, or with this event they were doing a lot of uh normally i say promos and it's just a couple people or whoever individuals doing uh uh, uh, just a quick little upcoming show promo. Well, these they did tonight uh, were more like video uh, stories or captions or or something like that. And the first run they did was uh, they did a, like a couple, in the, and they're like two and three minutes, or maybe maybe not quite that long, but close to it. Uh, but they did the the first little. Uh, run of promos they did was with Roxanne Perez and then uh, of course showing her uh, uh, journey to the top I guess you would say for the prodigy uh, and then you had Tony D and uh, you even had Tiffany Stratton uh, and they even had Braun coming into the arena uh, with his new look that's right Braun has a beard so Braun Baker beard Hey, there's some hair care product stuff for sale there, you know, I'm sure. Uh, but, yeah, they go, they go from that. And uh, for the first time ever on American soil, uh, they're going to do a Heritage Cup match for the uh, Heritage Cup. So, of course, it gives them a couple minutes of fill time to just explain the rules. And it's, you know, it's per match or per round. And there's a, a rest break and 
uh i think a dq causes a match to totally end uh so i mean it has its rules and i'm sure everyone here has heard them quite a bit over the last few weeks leading up to this but you you got dragon lee uh with nathan frazier in his corner uh coming out with noam dar and uh man the first round was just like everyone was getting wrist locks everybody get a wrist lock you get a wrist lock he gets a wrist lock she gets a wrist lock uh so kind of a Kind of an odd first round. Uh, and then Dar ends up um, doing a slick little move that almost got him disqualified at the end of the, of the round. And he, uh, uh, well, actually, that was the, uh, that was the uh, fourth round, I believe it was. Anyway, e- either way it goes. Uh, the, the, the style of this match, okay, I can see them, you know, it's a gimmick type of thing that they're bringing in. And uh, the other wrestlers always not really up on the rules, you know, so that gives the advantage to the championship. But uh, this match was pretty good. Uh, Can't uh, say, you know, Dragon Lee just seemed like uh, they grounded him. Uh, He didn't have as many of his fantastic, great moves that he does. Uh, But, you know, uh, Dar wins the second. Dragon Lee wins the fourth. Uh, Then, of course, uh, when it looks like Dragon Lee is maybe going to pull it off, you've got to have a little controversy. Uh, and uh, that's what happens. You have, sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am full. I'm sorry. That is terrible. Anyway, you have Miss Jackson run in, and she distracts the referee while Lash Legend uh, picks up a spit bucket and uh, quietly <laughs> hits Dragon Lee in the back which is going to result in uh dar winning um you know uh, winning the match uh the, the match was actually pretty good the ending you know it, it's it's something different hey it's something freaking different give me something different uh every day of the week uh, at least try uh and they go from that and they've got uh they do some more promos well they do they do some I don't even remember because I didn't write them down because they weren't that important. But they did do one on Gunter, uh, Dreyring Gennaro, <laughs> and uh, it was pretty good. They got to work on uh, Gunter's stare. He needs a polite stare. You know, he's just got the stare that says, you got my order wrong. Then he has the stare of, uh, you know, this hemline is wrong and, uh, you know, just stares like that. But he needs to get a happy, mean stare there. But anyway, they do that and they go into straight into a last man standing match against uh, Dragunov and uh, Dijak. And, uh, you know, Dragunov comes out. He's got the red contacts in. So he's he's seeing red. And uh, you had uh, Dijak, which walks up to, it looks like a random person in the crowd, but the announcer lets us know that it's uh, it's Dijak's wife and kid. But he's like, take her home. She does not need to see this. And I wanted him to go, and I am Cookie Monster. Uh, but anyway, they, uh, they, uh, um, they did pretty good. They did a, a great match, I have to say. Well, a very good match. Uh, they beat the crap out of each other. I mean, literally, figuratively, dragging off at the end of this thing looks like he's been through a war. Uh, and, and, and it's look, I have to recommend this match. Go back and see. I'm not going to say it's a five star. I'm not going to say it's a four star. But I'm going to say it's one hell of a three star. And, uh, man, look. Uh, they do a few things I hadn't seen. Uh, I, I may have seen it, but I didn't. Uh, don't remember. But it was one of them. Um, um, Dijak is pulling the table from under the ring, and he just stands it up on its end like he's getting ready to slide it under the bottom rope. And out of nowhere, uh slams through it uh, and busts the table, throws Dijak back. But at that time. Uh, Dijak uh, goes down and they put the camera on him and then they go quickly over to Dragunov and when they go over to Dragunov he has 
busted uh, his chin. So there's, it looks like he's busted his mouth, but later on I found out it was his chin. Uh, but they take the camera off him, and they have the doctor come over and clean him up real quick. And uh, I'm sure they put some no-clot on him, and, and that kept most of the time uh, keep the blood uh, uh, from coming out. But, uh, you know, he comes back in, and he's all clean, and, and you're wondering, uh, you know, how much that took out of him. Well, i tell you how much it took out of him. Uh, the sucker goes and pulls, uh, a Shane McMahon. Now I don't say that name in wrestling terms very much other than business wise, but, uh, they're, they, they split the stairs up and you know, the bottoms outside the tops inside. And, and, um, he, he puts the stairs with well, Dijak. They're going back and forth. He, uh, dragging off gets better of him, puts him in the corner. He's seated in the corner. He puts the stairs right next to him and, of course, climbs the opposite turnbuckle on that side and jumps off and does a Shane McMahon. And uh, he looked pretty good. Hey, uh, you know, big chops. They had the crowd hollering NXT, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, it was really good. Uh, Dijak has just got to get better uh, with his own camera. He just... He's not stiff, but he looks stiff. His his body is not stiff. It's his voice and his reactions are stiff. I, I don't know, but he brings a kendo stick in. And uh, Dragunov is it, like on the middle rope, but on the uh, turnbuckle, uh, you know, like he's exhausted. And Die Jack just comes from like left field. And hits him about three times with that kendo stick, and uh, and dragging off sells it. Uh, he sells it good, man. Uh, it just they end up with a big stare down. Uh, there's a chair, uh, you know. Uh, 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 Dijak put the stairs in the ring. Then he brings the table out and gets the worst into that. Then he brings a chair out and he's going to end up getting the worst of it because uh, it come down to. Uh, he gets uh, the the chairs on the ground. Uh, there ends up being like a DDT on the chair by the reaction. You just have to go back and watch this match. It's worth your time going back and watch this. Watch this. It's a good match. A lot of pain, and Dragonoff looks the worse for wear in this match. So, man, that was to push that one on over. And then they go back and they do a couple more of these little promos uh and one of them is of of cora jade they do a good one on her uh, but then they do uh a live thing with chase you and he's graded and put everybody's scores in and everybody passed and he's bringing in some guest speakers which happen to be uh, to my not surprise uh gulak and dempsey so uh they come in and they're gonna explain how to do it uh, to the class. So they pick one person out of the crowd to kind of use them for an example. And we all know who that's going to be. That's going to be Thea. So, yeah, they use her for an example. She gets mad, uh, runs out. Duke tells them bad, bad boy. Uh, so we're setting up something on down the road for that. Uh, and then they have uh, apparently now Noam Dar has a posse, has a crew, has a clique. Uh, cause he's got, uh, Mensa, he's got, uh, Miss Jackson and he's got, uh, Lash Legend and they're all, uh, happy, 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 uh, that he won the match. So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, of course they have to mention the next big premium event, which, uh, is going to be the great American bash. Uh, and then after that, you know, they bring out the Creed brothers and Gallus, uh, for a tag title match and of course the creed brothers have got ivy now with them and uh joe coffee uh which is uh booker t said was good to the last drop uh but yeah this was a good match um julius looks good brutus keeps getting a little bit better just i mean excuse me uh, uh, julius looked good brutus keeps getting a little bit better but brutus just can't sell i don't know if it's because he's so freaking tough I mean, he actually went undefeated in Division One wrestling his college uh, his last year. So, I mean, that is, you know, like freaking unheard of. So, uh, he is a legit bad to the mm-hmm. And uh, so, and this match is good. You know, uh, 
Uh, the match is going back and forth for a while. You know, the the first turn of the match is when Wolfgang gets uh, Brutus and throws him across the top rope. And, and you know, we got a few moves. And then at one point in time, Julius is getting beat on. And he does an offensive barrage. He does his best uh, Scott Steiner. He does his best Brock Lesnar. He just starts suplexing everybody. I was afraid he might take a vendor out or something. I mean, he is going at it uh joe goes uh, joe coffee goes to get involved ivy trips him uh a lot of things moving parts going on there the match is pretty good but this is what got me uh, the match is going good ivy just pulls a great move uh and and looks like you know the julius and, and brutus have got a chance here then ava <laughs> she comes out and does a terrible pushing of Ivy into the turnbuckle, which causes a distraction, which means Gallus Brothers win. Okay, let's get back to Ava here for a second. What in the world? I mean, are they? Please, please tell me they're not getting ready to bring her up because she is not ready. Solo was different. No, please. Uh, cause she, uh, sometimes has that deer in the headlight look and it's all young. It's just because of age, but you know, I mean, her time in the business, she doesn't have enough ring time, but, uh, no, she is not, not ready for that. So hopefully not. Uh, but then they, they do some more promos. Uh, and they've got uh, Rhea Ripley in here. They bring in the uh, hooded woman in the hoodie that's been terrorizing and they do one on uh, Valkyra uh, and which is going to lead to Valkyra and uh, Tiffany Stratton having the uh, the finals of the women's uh, champion or yeah the women's championship match and uh, look man Val has got the walk to the ring she's got all of that you know type stuff going on there really good uh, you know but she has a bad knee from uh, last week when Cora attacked her after the match. So that is setting that up. And Tiffany is just Tiffany. She is, uh, she's good. She is definitely not just a gymnast that's trying to be a wrestler. She's a wrestler that uh, is used to be a gymnast. And uh, she comes out hollering, hey, it's it's my time. And uh, the match actually kind of gets better as it goes along. And I'm kind of wondering if both of these ladies didn't have a little, uh, uh, little shell shock or a little, um, you know, it, it's easy to plan and easy to set up. But when you get out there to do it and you're on that big of event with extra cameras, <clears throat> all the extra stuff that you don't see on your Tuesday NXT broadcast, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was, but, uh, the match is good. Uh, Tiffany shows her strength several times catching her in this, uh, she tries her moonsault one or two times before she actually hits it. Valkyra is just, uh, does great. Uh, she sells her knee to a yeah, pretty good extent. Um, th- this was, uh, th- this wasn't the greatest match, but it got better as it went on, like I said. And, uh, yeah, Tiffany ends up winning this thing with that beautiful, beautiful moonsault that she does. Um, uh, <clears throat> but she just, when she was backing out of there with her belt, she didn't have the look like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm a champ. She didn't have the look like, I can't, uh, you know, like she's disgusted, you know, that she should, of course, been given the belt. She just had a look like she had to go to the bathroom or something. I, I just, I don't know what was that, that, that kind of look. I, I just, I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> she does though. Tiffany is now, uh, the champ. And uh, they do some more of those promos. Uh, they do the uh, Wesley. They do one on West. But then they bring in Nikita Lyons, which I think is going to be their next push as soon as she's uh, healthy enough. And, of course, they well, they're setting up Gigi and J.C. Jane for this coming Tuesday, which, uh, oh, my goodness, I can't wait for that one. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, they're going to. They're going to do that. They're going to do the damn thing here. Uh, but And then they do, of uh, course, about a two-minute or three-minute build-up, a video build-up on Braun and Mello's match. You know, being from the Boston area, uh, that's where Mello's from, up around there. So, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. But uh, the entrances, you know, I love me some good entrances. Uh, you know, you can – you can. You know, we used to have a guy, Jimmy Valiant, here. The uh, the You know, he was the boogie-woogie man. Uh, he 
It was all about his entrance. I mean, that was he was terrible in the ring. Terrible. I mean, you know, he'd throw some punches, you know, uh, or something like that. He was just he was a good heel, but when he was a good guy, he just uh, he was terrible. But his entrances were freaking great. Uh, so by the time you finally figured out he was bad, you know, the match is about over, and it's in that that uh, the the top of the match. So everybody's looking pretty good. But anyway, um, the entrance. Okay, the entrance for Braun. He had a mask on, a dog mask. And I understand, yeah, the, the dog face gremlin, I got you, I, I know, I know. But this is uh, a different time and a different day, and that's his moneymaker is his face. So, uh, I don't know. Unless they're selling the mask in their, uh, in their, you know, in their uh, vending section. So, then I totally, totally understand and even Braun's jacket was cool. It had like rips, like where, uh, like if a big animal had scratched at him, and they were torn, like the nails had cut it. I mean, it was pretty cool, pretty cool little setup. And of course, he had the beard, so a total different looking uh, a Braun coming out. And then you got Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, and and Trick does the intro for Melo and uh, does his uh, uh, him. Uh, I just don't particularly care for that, but it sounds like something HBK probably thought of. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, when he does his little, um, you know, uh, they, when, uh, when trick goes him, uh, you know, Mello comes out and he does his little arm pose and he's got these, uh, towels hanging from his arm that, uh, says H and then M. And of course he is the I. Uh, but I could see in the future, I could see Vince looking at that going, well, we don't have to put those letters on there. We could probably put some advertising right there and then a couple of websites there. And so, yeah, that's probably going to end up being the future, uh, after those terrible, terrible, uh, suits that the ladies have to wear in Saudi Arabia, uh, yesterday, but we won't go into that. That's another show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, the, this match, uh, I mean, the future ad money on the arms yet. I mean, uh, and I can definitely, I can see this set up as plain as plain can be on down the road. Maybe, oh, I don't know, November, something like that. I could see a trick turn. And that's not a trick to turn around. That's Trick Williams turning on uh, his buddy, Mello. So, uh, yeah, uh, and, and in this match, look, Mello was was smart. He does the old uh, traditional. He he uh, goes after a body part, goes after one of the knees, which, of course, is a main source for Braun uh, and his power and his, and his wrestling style. So he does good on that. Uh, he got some good pump kicks. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, and when he does get the leg hurt, he does a single leg crab. And I haven't seen a single leg crab. I maybe an AEW because they have a lot of old school style of wrestling, but uh in the WWE it has been a while since I've seen a single leg crab. Uh so yeah, they that looked good. Um but man, uh and and, and then Braun, he does the push ups, does the and Scott Steiner push ups and he gets the crowd going. They're telling him he sucks. They're hollering at him. But, man, he pulls off a beautiful Frankensteiner. Beautiful Frankensteiner. And uh, at one point in time, he jumps up after he's been getting whooped on and just looks at Mello and says, uh, you know, uh, no. <laughs> he's just he's too damn good. Uh, you can't beat me. I'm too damn good is what he says. Uh, so, yeah, and, and with with uh, Braun doing uh, Boston sucks, and uh, and uh, you know it kind of made you think, you know, the old Scarface line or Scott Hall line. We may be saying hello to the bad guy because he might be a very good bad guy. Uh, we will have to see with the future whether they take him baby face or leave him heel. But I like him heel. I think he's a natural. You know, he, I think he can do that better. I mean. Look, his uncle, uh, Scott Steiner, was, was a good headliner, b big matches. But to tell you the truth, when he got in TNA, he seems to have gotten better as a headliner and definitely better on his interviews because he can add and subtract really well. Uh, but, yeah, this this match is good, uh, and I would definitely recommend going back and watching it. Uh, of course, uh, Braun has to do his Jerry Lawler imitation and bring the straps down for the big finish, and it ends up turning on him. And uh, look, man, 
This match was good up until the last two minutes. The last two minutes, the finish, I got to be honest, it sucked. I didn't like the way they did it. I thought it was slowed down so everybody can do their moves right. I did not like towards the end that Braun uh, seemed to be calling the match, but he wasn't even hiding his uh, his mouth when he was saying things. Uh, you know, so anybody that can read a little lips could pick up what he was saying. Uh, you know, and I know it was his first defense and that in his hometown, so they wanted things to look good and, and everything like that. But, look, this was a pretty good card, uh, pretty good matches. I mean, enough I would definitely recommend going back and watching it. I'll tell you. Believe me. I'll tell you when it sucks. But this didn't suck. This was, was pretty good. This whole event, I would say, was a three-star with a half of a star maybe on some of them. You know, um, you know, good, good. But, yeah, having uh, the finish in like that, uh, I did not like it. Unless they're just going to bring Braun on up and uh, he's out of there. And, and maybe that case, I could see it. But I don't know. But, uh, hey, first offense, uh it did look pretty good. Uh, the whole card looked pretty good. The Ava, I do not understand Ava, so I'm going to be a little uh, a little worried for a few weeks here. That they, that uh, next thing I know, she's on uh, the bloodline after all their uh, shakeup, uh, or whatever you want to call it. So I don't know, but we will see. That is the good thing about these events, because over the next few weeks, we will see what unfolds for all of us in our uh you know in our poor man's soap opera here so uh, guys look thank you very much this was just a quick little review of uh battleground so i hope everyone enjoyed it and look we're just going to end it here and and i'm just going to say hey this is memphis mark coming to you from mullet manor if you can rescue do what you can but always spay and neuter and this is memphis mark and i am out <laughs> Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.